Alrighty. Um, so my name is Matt Tucker. I am a developer and themer at Bing Vision uh, from Colorado. Um, this presentation is largely around pre-process. Um, it will go over a few other aspects in uh, the theming world as well, but largely focusing around pre-process. Um, just so I can better gauge a little bit of how to do this, um, how many of you are Real quick, I'm sorry to bother you. Just tuck that on your shirt and put that in your pocket. Sorry about that. Let me do it. Hey. Keep going. Don't worry about me. Um, how many of you guys are themers? And developers? and have no idea what you're doing. All right. <laughs> um, so the dictionary definition of a pre-process, this is uh, what is on Drupal.org right now, um, on the documentation page about pre-process, is that it sets up variables to be placed within template files. Uh, this is really fairly simple um, in that aspect, but what it means and what you can do with it, both in terms of uh, module development and theming is pretty powerful. Um, a quick, if you're from the module world, uh, hook theme is pretty common, um, but this is an example from the node template, or, or from the node module, which does two different things. Uh, the first part, um, do I have a mouse? No. Um, the first part uh, at the beginning, where it says node, that sets up the node template file, uh, telling it to look, if you see the um, part of the array template, it just says look for the node.tpl.php. Uh, this is pretty common. Uh, it's, it's really how template files are set up, how they're made from the module layer. Um, the theme engine at this point would go look for the node tpl in the node module, and if a theme then overrides that, the theming engine handles all of that automatically. Um, where preprocess steps in is really at this point. Uh, it looks for the node TPL file, looks for uh, the node, the preprocess associated with that, and passes uh, the arguments uh, specified there, and passes those, if there is a preprocess, it passes it to the preprocess, and then on to the template file itself. Uh, just as a comparison, the node submitted there is how a theme function is created on the module layer. Um, at that point, that would look for the function theme underscore node underscore submitted, pass the needed uh, the needed arguments onto that and output the information. I'm going to start out with a very broad overview and I'll get straight into code uh, showing examples because that's how I learn. So um, I'll, I'll start out kind of broad. Um, this is an example of page.tpl from core. Um, pretty simple. What preprocess is doing is really controlling the actual variables that uh, come, that are printed. Um, a lot of times uh, if you're a themer, you just kind of take these for granted. You copy and paste them from either Core or Garland or some other theme um, into your own page.tpl. Uh, but that's how they're defined is through template preprocess page. Uh, and if we kind of narrow that list down to some pretty easy ones, um, taking going back to that small snippet of page.tpl, uh, you'll see that the title and the tabs and the messages are all defined um, right there. It, the, what I showed previously, this is inside of theme.inc, uh, which is a really interesting file to take a look at, um, especially if you are new to the theming world. Uh, the, it really is the basis of the entire theme engine, setting things up, um, providing examples in terms of how to do um, pre-process, because it is the root pre-process of page TBL. It's how it's originally done. Uh, and so as a First example, it's quite interesting. You'll notice that each part of the vars array uh, in preprocess 
is the is directly associated with what is printed uh, to the screen. So you have vars feed icons, and that is printed just as a straight variable into the page TPL. Um, so that's what that says. The order of execution. Uh, this isn't all that important, but it's good to know what exactly is going on. Uh, the first the first part of free process that is executed is uh, coming from core, which is mainly inside of that theme.inc file. Uh, and this is template underscore free process and template free process hook. I'll explain these a little bit further. Uh, and then at that point, modules can step in and execute their own free process, altering the variables, adding variables, and things like that. Then the theme engine steps in, does what it needs to do, and finally, uh, the theme step in. If you're using a sub theme, it executes, or if you're using a base theme, the base theme ex executes first, and then any sub themes execute in the order um, that they are sub themed. Um, I'm going to move straight on to example here because that's what I like to do. Um, all right. So what I've done uh, is set up a very basic. Um, function, uh, which is pre -pro my theme name is preprocess, sorry if that confuses people. Um, but So this the first preprocess really should be replaced with whatever theme name you're using, uh, or if you're in the module layer, whatever module you're using. Uh, that really is part of the power of preprocess, is that they can be executed from both the module layer and the theme layer, and so template files can be modified from both a module and a theme uh, through preprocess. And if we have time at the end, I'll get into a little bit of the philosophy of when you should use which. Um, but for now, we'll stick within the theme layer because it's not only the easiest to use, but it's also at the end of the line of order of execution. So I know all the changes I'm making will actually take effect. Um, so how you structure the function name uh, is your theme name, underscore preprocess, underscore hook. Uh, the hook is usually the... Uh, template file that you're dealing with. So if you're dealing with node.tpl.php, uh, the last part of this function name is underscore node. If you're dealing with page.tpl.php, it's underscore page. Uh, comment wrapper, same thing, comment underscore wrapper. Um, at that point, you specify vars. And this is everything that is available to be printed from the page TPL, or from, in this case, the node TPL. If I go ahead and print this out, uh, if you don't know what DPM is, it's from the Devel module. Uh, it, DSM. It, it either or works. Um, DSM is really just a wrapper for DPM, and it's in there for legacy purposes only because people continue to use it. Uh, DPM is, yeah, DSM is purely a wrapper, so there's really no need to use it. Um, Devel gives you about 10 different ways of printing out um, objects and arrays. But uh, So if I go into a specific node now, uh, I get a lovely message which prints out everything that's available from my node TPL. You notice in this we have things like, um, let me clear cache, make sure everything is cleared. Uh, in here we have things like the title of the node, the node ID itself, uh, the type of the node, uh, the body. All of these are printed through node TPL. Uh, if I go into my process. Node TPL, all of these are printed just like normal. Um, printing of the title is handled uh, through page TPL, but uh, the content and the terms and all of that are printed. Uh, but th this, is, this is the root of that. So, an example that I have come up with. Uh, I've set up a pretty basic site. Uh, that's using taxonomy. It has two different vocabularies, one for the continent um, that the post is around and one for the animals associated with this node. Um, and by default all of these terms are thrown together in an alphabetical list uh, and in this case it just says Africa ele elephants and it's really not all that understandable. So a, a pretty common use case that uh, I have done a lot is to separate out the terms based on the vocabulary. Uh, to put them in two different lists um, based on the root vocabulary. So that's my first example. If I go back to page TPL, um, something that I uh, have started doing is 
terms by vocab. Um, kind of pulling everything out into individual functions to do specific jobs. Uh, this allows me to copy um, functions from site to site and very quickly do the same functionality across things. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to do preprocess terms by vocab. Uh, I'm, in this case, I'm deciding to pass this by reference, which just essentially means I don't have to return at the end. Um, and for quickness, I'm going to copy and paste this and then explain it. All right, so what this function is doing is checking if terms exist and if I'm looking at a page. Uh, I don't want this list to display on a teaser. I'm just coming up with random use cases. Um, and in fact, if it is a teaser, I don't want to display terms at all, uh, which is what this right here is doing. So I'm essentially unsetting the terms. Um, for each of the taxonomy terms, I am building a new array um, based on the, and then making a link based on the term name, linking to the term ID. And then uh, once that array is built, um, and here's where it stores by vocabulary ID, and then once that array is built for each vocabulary, load the vocabulary, and then print out an item list of the terms with the vocabulary name as the title. Um, something that you have to be very careful of when doing this kind of thing, especially when you're loading any data, is security. Uh, I, I stress that point because a lot, I, I can almost guarantee that any security holes, um, well, that a lot of security holes are done from the theme layer and not the module layer because a lot of times you have people that really don't know PHP all that well working in themes. Um, and if you're loading data uh, and, and printing it to the screen, it really has to be sanitized to make sure that people aren't executing really disgusting JavaScript on your site. Um, so this is a pretty rare thing because it's the vocabulary name which administrators really have only access to. Um, but I, I stress learning the security, learning how to uh, cleanse the data before putting it to the screen. Uh, and then, as I said before, if, the, um, if we're looking at a teaser, I want to unset the terms completely so they're not outputted to the screen. So let's see what this looks like. If I refresh, you'll notice my term list has now been uh, completely changed, uh, and it is two different item lists with the vocabulary name uh, in the beginning. Uh, it's a little bit easier to understand, uh, quite a bit nicer uh, in terms of the final presentation. And if I look at this in the teaser form, uh, there are no terms sitting over here. And so ev everything kind of works as expected. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. Um, the next thing I want to do is change the way the date is displayed. Um, right now it's kind of ugly, uh, you can't really read it, and in this case I might be doing some kind of blog about my safari trips through Africa or something, and so the date is fairly important. I want to um, push it a little bit more. So in this case I will do the same thing. Come over to copy and paste. And I will make all this code um, available after, so it's um, all right. So I'm again running the entire vars through this new function, uh, which is going to provide a little bit of a fancier uh, date display for me. Um, so in this case, it looks at the created. Uh, that is one of the variables that I have uh, in the vars. If I pull here. You'll notice I have the Unix timestamp of when this node was created. So uh, I'm using that, running it through format date, which is an uh, API function provided by Drupal, um, which takes into account time zones and things like that. Uh, you, can, you can just use date of uh, PHP's function, but it won't take into account time zones. Um, and then formatting things the way I want, wrapping the needed divs, the needed classes that I need, and then appending to the beginning of the content um, this information. If I take a look at the final output of this, 
you'll notice I have a nice little date block here. Uh, of course, there's quite a bit of CSS behind this to make it look pretty, um, but the overall idea of taking that created date in Unix timestamp form and appending it to the beginning of the content uh, through free process is all handled. But you'll notice at this point we have it in two places. We have it in the submitted information and we have it over here. So I don't really like that. I want to get rid of that as well. So Where is it? Um, so what this is doing is it's checking if the submitted exists first first. Um, and this is mainly because on certain content types, on a per content type basis, you can choose whether or not you want the submitted information to show uh, in the beginning or not. And so by checking if it, uh, if it really is set, I'm taking that into account. Uh, and then I am loading the author and adding uh, var submitted gets submitted by the author name linked to the author's profile. Uh, and you'll notice that I'm not including the date at the end of this. So this is now overriding the submitted variable that Drupal Core is providing by default and giving it whatever I want. Um, and if I come over here and refresh, you'll notice it's now changed and it just says submitted by the name and it's that is a link to the user's profile. Now, I've done all of this without touching a single template uh, and that's really where the power of free process comes, is because you don't have to constantly be touching template files. Uh, if you're not utilizing free process, a lot of times you will have quite a bit of logic in the template layer, uh, which really shouldn't be there. Template files should only have logic, in my eyes, they should only have the logic that is checking whether or not something exists or not. Yes? One more time, can you show me where you're where you are writing this, this uh, code at what file? Sure. This is template.php um, in the theme. And again, this is in the function preprocess node. And I'm just pulling these, uh, I'm just adding additional functions here just so they, just so it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, and so this is simply, I, I could just as easily take this information out, erase this function, and add it right there. Um, I just didn't want a massive um, thing. I like, I, I like a lot of organization in the theme. Um, the sites we work on are extremely large and the themes get very, very complicated very fast. And so a lot of what we have done, um, I'm a co-maintainer of the studio theme as well, uh, which really restructures how themes are laid out. Um, and if I have a little bit of time at the end, I'll go into some of that. Uh, how it is restructured, uh, but it's really to make our lives easier. Because, uh, as a quick preview, the node uh, preprocess can get extremely long, as you can see. Um, they can get very long very fast, depending on the types of things you're doing. And so, uh, Studio instead does preprocess files uh, for each function. And so, instead of doing preprocess underscore node, I would create a new file that's called preprocess node. Uh, dot ink inside of the theme and that is automatically loaded in and executes the same way. Uh, so there's little things like that that um, Studio does that really makes lives easier, uh, especially on large complicated themes. Um, one last thing that Studio does, which is my last example um, on, for this segment, is pulling attributes into preprocess. Uh, and Studio takes this to the extreme and does virtually every attribute uh, through the pre through preprocess. Uh, and what that looks like in the template layer is pretty simple. Looking at the node TPL, um, you'll see a string like this, which is pretty ugly. Um, there's a lot of little stupid things going on. If it if the node is sticky, print sticky. If the um, and print the node ID for the ID name, and there's, there's a lot of really rudimentary um, logic checks going on here, which makes this string kind of hard. And if I want to add something to this, this line gets extremely long. If I want to add a class for um, a term, um, that's pretty common, and I'll show you what I'll, I'm actually going to 
do that. Um, so how I would pull this into preprocess is by creating a new variable uh, through preprocess that I'm going to exit that I'm going to print through Node TPL, and it's simply going to be called print attributes. So right now this is going to create an empty div uh, or just an imp just a straight div with nothing with no attributes associated with it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and populate that through template.php. Um, so the same way I will where is it? So what I'm doing is at the very end of this you'll see vars attributes. That is essentially adding a new element to the vars array um, and that is then available for output within my template file uh, which I'm using right there. So I'm printing it to the screen. And all the logic that comes before this is really, if I get rid of this, um, all the logic that comes before this is really printing that string that was originally there. Uh, it's adding a class of node, adding a class of clear block, adding a class of post. Uh, if it's sticky, it adds sticky. But this is a little bit easier to understand. It's a little bit easier to parse. Uh, and not only that, but I can very easily add something to it. So in this case, I want, back on this original post, ah, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want a picture of Africa to appear behind this post on Africa. Um, of course, you can do pretty much whatever you want, but for this use case, I want a picture of Africa to display. So, what I'm doing is looking at the node object uh, in the taxonomy array and making sure that I'm not on the teaser. I don't want this picture of Africa to display on the teaser. I only want it to display on um, the full node view. And then for each, uh, um, for each one of the terms inside of this taxonomy array, I want to add a class that is the... Um, lowered version of the term name. And again, I'm running it through check plane um, just to make sure that this term is really clean for output, that I'm not going to be out outputting some crazy JavaScript. Um, and then at the end of this, vars attributes, um, it adds the attributes. And Drupal attributes is provided by um, Drupal, which essentially cranks through this array uh, looking for uh, the elements class and ID and any other uh, whether or not you want to provide a title or if you're an image providing an alt tag, things like that, um, is all handled by Drupal attributes. And this has been slightly changed based on how Studio did it. Um, <coughs> Studio stored classes as arrays um, instead of strings like this is doing. Um, and uh, a patch was just con committed to Drupal 7, which allows that, um, allows instead of this, then you would have something like this, which is a little bit prettier. Um, but at this point, if I take a look at what's going on, oh, I know. Um, <laughs> I'm basing my pre-process theme off of a theme that Lullabot just contributed. Um, and they have a node.tpl.php. So if I find here, yeah. or sorry, they have a node-story.tpl.php that's stepping in. Uh, so I will print attributes here as well. All right, so going back here, um, again, it's appending to this class array um, the term name for every term that is tagged. Yes? That's right, because this is ending. This is ending the beginning div. All right. So if I come over here and refresh, you'll notice a beautiful picture of Africa in the background, and that is because if you'll notice now on this div, we are we have two additional classes, um, Africa and elephants, which is um, how this was 
And then through the CSS, we are adding that image. Yes? So you're building the class, classes for every node type, but only rendering it on the um, story TPL. Would you, would you be inclined to conditionally build those, those classes? What do you mean? Like um, on the TPL PHP, on the template PHP, you're, you're running through this function for every node type. Yes. Um, and I actually, I, ideally, I wouldn't have a node storytplphp um, The only reason I have to have that is because of how Lullabot did their theme, um, which I actually kind of disagree with how they did that uh, part of this theme. Um, the only reason they added that node that node storytplphp was to add um, this this information only on story nodes and nothing else. But my my belief is that that type of logic should be done through preprocess and not template. Um, I, I really only believe you should create a new template file if you are drastically changing the, the wrappers um, associated. So if you need a completely different page layout, um, then you should create a new page on TVL. But if you simply need to add a class or move something or add something in uh, here and there, you really shouldn't be creating new, page, new template files. And what that allows you to do is make changes you need without having to make them multiple times. You'll notice I had to go make that change. Yes? Uh, in other words, if you're changing the structure of the page. Correct. If you're changing wrapper elements, you really have no other choice. But if you're not changing wrapper elements, it's extremely useless. It's going to make a theme very unmaintainable. Um, because you have, you have to do things multiple times. Uh, which, if I want to go move the vocabulary listing from the top to the bottom, I now have to make multiple edits to a template file um, because I have more than one template file that, is, that are controlling things. Uh, and so the least number of times you have to do that, the better, um, because we all know how lovely clients are with changes. Um, and they're going to keep coming back to you, and you're going to have to keep making those changes across the five, six, seven node template files you have, uh, where most of the time you don't have to do that. And so, sure, if I, if I wasn't going to use that class um, on any other template um, besides Node, I could easily, or, or besides Stories, um, I could just as easily say, that. And now if I was viewing a non-story node, the classes um, associated with the terms won't be added. Uh, and that's really where the power of pulling attributes into preprocess is, is that I can very easily conditionally add classes, conditionally add um, attributes without creating new template files. So instead of adding this logic into node-story.tpl.php, I can just add a new um, statement, add a new conditional statement. And that's why uh, Studio really, really pushes that, and it has greatly improved our workflow um, at Pingvision. All right. Um, kind of a recap. Uh, the Although this is the dictionary definition, there's one other purpose, and that is to specify which template files are being called. And this is another extremely powerful aspect of preprocess. If I go back to sorry, and open this up, this is being printed from a preprocess node. Um, and if I look at my template files, um, there, there's an element of this vars array called template files. And all, it, really this is just a big array of potential template files that the theme engine is going to be looking for. And so in this case it's looking for node-story.tpl.php. That specific um, option is given by Drupal core, which is node-node-type. Um, and then it's also looking for, of course, the root node.tpl.php. If I print this from, if I print vars from page, um, we'll get quite a bit of more options. Ah. 
anytime you're adding a new preprocess function, you have to clean um, the theme cache. So you'll notice that nothing really happened right here. And if I continually refresh, that DPM is not working. Um, and that's simply because I have to clear the cache. And now if I refresh, I get uh, the information. So anytime you're adding preprocess, remember to clear cache. Um, don't let that bite you. Um, and if I look at the template files array, you'll notice that there's two options. Uh, Drupal starts from the bottom of this array and works up. And so the first page option that it's looking for is page-node-nodeid.tpl.php. Um, so if you wanted to create a page template for this specific node, um, that's the template file that you would create. Devel module gives you the nice um, themer um, aspect, which allows this to be visualized in a better way. Um, but really, it's not all that needed if you um, know how to use it, how to access that same information through preprocess. Um, so the first part it looks for is page dash node. Second part is page uh, or page dash node dot node ID. Second one is page dash node. Uh, now this can actually be added to. If I wanted to add something to this, maybe for the node type. If I want to theme the page for a specific node type, um, it, it's more common than you might think, uh, and it's not provided by Drupal Core. But it's fairly easy to do from the theme layer. Um, if I go back over here inside, simply add a new part, add a new element to this array that is page dash. Uh, one beautiful thing is through the page pre through um, the page preprocessor, you're given the entire node object if you're looking at a single node. So in this case, that is vars node type. And if I move my print to after that, ah. oh, I was about to add an equal sign. If I refresh this, uh, refresh again. There we go. Uh, you're, I now have page dash story, uh, which is now going to look for page dash story dot tpl dot php. So if I add that to my theme, Refresh this, that's all I get. Yes? Can you reorder those two? Because I imagine you would want the node ID to, to actually override the, the node type. Sure, and, and that's just knowing how PHP arrays work. Right, right. Um, so you could unset the first one and um, then add it and then add it to the end. Um, so that's another part that you really have to get comfortable with if you're working with preprocesses how to um, work with PHP. Um, moving things around in arrays. Uh, changing the order of things. Um, all of that is fairly commonly done uh, from preprocess. Yes? What's a use case for changing the order? Uh, just like what he just said. If you have, um, if you want to do page-story.tpl.php and then you want on a specific node uh, that might be a story, you want to have a different page template. Um, the way that these are ordered right now, you would never be able to do that. Um, and so you want the page dash node ID to go at the end of that array. Uh, so, yeah, and then narrowing. Uh, and that's how, for the most part, that's how the theme engine works right now, that it starts broad and narrows in. Uh, there's a few exceptions to that, but uh, for the most part, that's true. Uh, so that is a very powerful part of preprocess, because there's a lot of times where it's like, I wish I could just make a template file for this, but it's I, I can't. Um, and preprocess allows you to very quickly um, specify a new page template um, to be executed, a new suggestion for Drupal to use. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. So there's really no limit to what you can do. Uh, you have full control over what is outputted to the screen, and that gets very dangerous um, because <laughs> I mean, if I wanted to, I could sit here and write SQL all day inside of preprocess. But that comes back to the philosophy of what the theme engine should be doing 
and what it, it it's technically allowed to do anything. I can execute DB query from a theme layer just as easy as I can do it from a module layer, but you don't want to um, because Drupal is very good about separating design from uh, the actual content in the site itself. It's very good at keeping that separation for the most part. Um, and so while I, I think it's fine to move things around, um, doing something like, uh, let's refresh this. So I, I, I really don't see a problem with adding content like this because it's, it's simply moving. I'm not adding new content to the screen. Sure, I had to e execute a few functions to get that there. Uh, I had to do a user load in order to get this. Um, I had to do a taxonomy load over here in order to get this information. But it, it's nothing drastic. Um, there's really becomes a problem when you start doing SQL through a theme, which I've seen far too much. Uh, and it, it's scary when you see that because it, it's not only hard to find, it's hard to track down. Um, it, it scares me when themers start messing with SQL. Um, and and so keeping that separation, making sure you're not really changing the functionality of the site or drastically altering the content that is outputted to the screen. Uh, an example that we like to use is if someone was going to reskin this, change the theme completely, would they keep the data the same? In this case, maybe, maybe not. Uh, they might want to keep that functionality, they might not. Um, but for this use case, I think it's fine. Um, something like this, I, I think you could easily say that that's going to change if they've reskinned the site, that that's going to maybe be moved or altered. Um, and so if a new theme was added, you, you sure, you might have to write that preprocess again. Um, but if you're completely changing content, uh, then of course you want that content to be changed when you add a new theme to the site. Uh, and so that really should not be done through the theming layer uh, of preprocess because it won't take effect if you add a new theme. Yes? So, typically, can you do anything you can do in a module in a template of PHP code? Like, say, for instance, form, uh, form alter? No. Uh, you cannot do a form alter through template.php, uh, which there, there are issues with that because there's plenty of um, content that is rendered through um, forms. Uh, a common one that I see on the forms all the time uh, is the search. Um, the search bar and it says search this site. Themers always want to change that. And the only way to change that is through form alter, um, which kind of sucks. Uh, there, uh, as I said, there are problems in terms of keeping that separation uh, and that's a perfect example of it is forms. Um, forms, it, it's, it's a constant problem for themers. Uh, they're hard to theme because you can't access all the information you need to from the theme layer. Um, but I, I recently taught one of our themers at Ping Vision how to do a form alter, and in a lot of ways they're not too different from preprocess for doing simple things, for changing text, for um, appending or uh, for prefixing or suffixing uh, certain elements. They're not all that much different, and so it's I urge you to take a look at form alter and don't be afraid to use it. Um, um, yeah. I have a, a, a kind of a talking about more of the philosophy side of sure. coding um, stuff. So this is this kind of come up in a project that I've, I've been working on for a while um, <clears throat> regarding like form alters and like the search uh, form uh, versus uh, pre processed functions in the theme layer. Um, it's called pre-process, but as I understand it, there's already been an initial render of the page. So um, the name almost seems like a little bit of a misnomer. And if you have a site that um, is branded and intended to scale up to um, in the million um, you know, page views per month range, sure. um, it seems like for performance and you know, economy of code and not doing the same thing over and over, you want to put it higher in the, in the processing you know, uh, pecking order, you know, and, and so we, we had like a little module to put a few little things like this, but I'm, I'm wondering, we keep having this kind of debate as to how much should we be doing in, at, with pre-process functions, how much should we try to put into a module and, and take it like higher in the food chain 
And um, if you could just kind of speak to that a little bit. Sure. Um, it's a little bit hard to answer um, because the actual rendering of the page is done virtually every time. Uh, but there are elements of that that are cached. Um, and it really doesn't matter all that much where you step in and change things. Um, it, it's the elements that are going to be cached will still be cached. Um, but doing things from the theme layer is not going to drastically affect your, the performance um, because it's made to run every time. Um, and it is going to run every time. Um, so yes and no. Um, it, it's not all that big of a deal. Uh, and it, it, I don't really think, oh, this really should be higher in the pecking order. Um, because it, in, in that particular case, it doesn't make all that much of a difference. Uh, but with that said, uh, something like adding CSS. Um, CSS uh, is run through its own compression, uh, packed into a single file, uh, and then that is given to um, the viewer. And it, you, first of all, you in Drupal 6, you can't add CSS through preprocessed page. Uh, in Drupal 7, you can. Um, but there's a, there's a recent CVS application that I'm going back and forth with a guy trying to decide if I want to approve it or not um, because he's adding CSS through page TPL um, and that doesn't run through the same compression. Um, it's not going to be um, compressed down to that single file uh, because he's doing it at, at a lower level. And so there are, of course, exceptions to that. Um, but for the most part, it's not all that big of a deal. Um, memcache is one of them. <laughs> it's, it's, it'll take care of all of that um, kind of thing for you. So, don't know if that completely answered it. Probably don't. But it's, do you know a good source of not necessarily the the how, but um, a book or something somewhere that does a really good job of explaining why you would make these decisions? You know, maybe like is there, in, there any books that kind of in terms of why? Not necessarily, but you can come up with that. Uh, the question to that yourself by understanding um, really how Drupal is built and pro Drupal development is the obvious answer there. Uh, the first, I think it's either chapter one or chapter two, has a great run through of on every page request what happens. Uh, and it is, it's a brilliant run through. Um, it starts out with the very first function that's done, runs through what is really going on before everything is outputted to the screen. Uh, I, it's in chapter one or chapter two, so definitely take a look at that. And pro Drupal development, uh, the Drupal Bible. Guess I need to reread it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is a little off topic. I started using the Netflix editor. I just started using it. Just they came out with a new version, and I was like, whatever, I'll give it a shot. I'm. Nah. <laughs> uh, um, I, I'm usually an Eclipse user. Um, I, the PDT version of Eclipse is very solid. Um, yeah, I, I've also used Komodo for um, a lot of stuff, but I like the open source nature of Eclipse. Um, there, there's a few pretty big problems that I have with NetBeans that I don't want to go into right now, but in, in terms of an overall text editor, it's it, it's not bad. It's a lot better than its previous versions. Uh, so if you haven't given it a shot in the last month or so after they've give, after they've released this new one, Don't take a look. A plug -in for or I couldn't tell you. Um, yeah, one of the previous versions did. Okay. Sure, what exactly did it do? Wireframe and logic. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Um, this doesn't apply to me. That was for Drupal Camp Colorado. Um, and I really, really stress security. <laughs> I can't really say that one enough. Yes. So you, you showed a pre-process node and pre-process page. Which other which other ones are available that come in with all of them? And, what's that? All of them. Well, pre-process foo. I mean, what what are which sure. ones available? If I step back a few slides. Uh, where is it? Here. Um, 
So you'll notice at, I, I always do pre-process hook. Uh, of course, this is bad markup, um, but I mean this um, as more of a variable term, and that is the root template file um, that is being done. And if I back up to my hook theme, uh, that is this. And so what that is is really the root template file that's being executed. Uh, that's no TPL, that's page TPL, that's comment wrapper TPL, that's comment.tpl, that's uh, everything. And this goes all the way down to views uh, and CCK and all of that, all the template files that are given uh, step back to the root uh, and you are given that preprocess. Um, you can make your own Yes. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Regarding your, your theme and kind of confusing because you call it preprocess. Um, so the, the, the function that you're creating gets appended with preprocess. Now, is that the preprocess that Google is looking for in the naming scheme? The, the name sure. So this, would, this really should be that. My theme underscore preprocess underscore node. Oh, but the other function that you can create. Yeah. The the, one after that. Oh, oh, this? Yeah. Uh, this is just following the standard naming convention um, that Drupal does, which is um, namespace underscore whatever you want. So if I'm a... It, PHP freaks out when you have a function named the same, uh, when you have two functions named the same. And so the naming convention that Drupal uses is theme name or module name underscore and the rest. And so since I'm making these functions uh, to do various things, I'm prefixing them with my theme name. Uh, so this, again, would be my theme underscore terms by vocab. Um, so that really has nothing to do with preprocess. I'm just executing it uh, to kind of pull things out uh, to make it easier to understand, which probably made it harder to understand. But <laughs> did you have a question? Um, going back to your slide, uh, would there be a, a preprocess for, for the no submitted like you have below? Uh, no. Right, right on that one. No, uh, that's that's just a standard theme function, and so you would overwrite that the same way uh, you would overwrite any theme function, which is uh, so there would only be a, a preprocess of the template. Correct. Correct. Um, and in terms of the module layer, what's really happening? Um, oh, the arguments that you specify here are the first things that are given to vars um, and vars through preprocess and at that point you can add or change things and so if you are a module developer make, pulling those kind of things into preprocess really helps themers um, in terms of providing those root variables uh, and so the node module for example starts with just the node object and then through its own node preprocess um, it it pulls out things like the node title and the node created and creates um, root elements for those for easy output through the theme. And so printing things like printing arrays and printing objects in the template file is a little bit ugly. Um, it's just quite a bit easier to just, in, through preprocess, pull that down uh, to a root element of ours um, just for prettiness. Yes? Uh, let's, let's say you had a site that kind of had uh, multiple themes or... Yeah. Sure. You know, kind of skins of other two users. Is there some place that you could can put these preprocess functions in a single place, or do you need to duplicate them in each each available theme? Two answers to that. Um, the first answer is to create a base theme that both of those themes are based off of, and that's probably my suggestion um, because there are going to be elements of those two themes that you want to keep the same, and so making a base theme, and that could even be based off of Zen or Studio or something, and then I have a third layer um, on top of that that is um, the two themes that you want your users to choose from. Uh, the other option is to execute these preprocess through uh, a module. As long as the module uh, has a heavier weight, uh, then you can do whatever you want. And so you can just simply create a module um, that steps in before the theme layer. If I go back to this, um, because modules are execute before themes, um, as long as um, your module has a larger weight than the template files that you're trying to alter, um, then you're good to go. So there's two options there. Yes? What are your thoughts on Zen? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I, 
I want to be diplomatic here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely think it's ballooned. I think it's extremely large and complicated, um, but at the same time, I think it has a very distinct purpose. Uh, it, it does things in a slightly different way than Studio, but in a way they're doing thing they're doing the exact same thing, uh, which is adding classes. Zen essentially adds a bunch of classes to a theme um, and reorders some functions and makes things a little bit easier in that sense. Uh, but overall, it's adding a bunch of classes. And in that case, Studio is doing the same thing, but it's doing it in slightly different ways. Um, I think... I, I'm not going to say Studio is any easier to understand because I know it isn't, uh, especially because it's changing the way uh, that the theme engine is structured in a way. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so while I completely respect John Albin for creating Zen, and we've definitely worked together um, in terms of building these building studio and Zen, uh, we've borrowed functions from him. He's borrowed ideas from us. Um, I, I think they do things com a little bit different, and it's just a matter of preference at that point. Um, Mainly because of the structure it provides. Um, it, it does two, two things. The first is uh, it creates the preprocess files instead of the preprocess functions. Uh, and that's something that I'm working on a massive patch to bring into core, uh, which is turning out to be more complicated than I thought it would be. Um, but, and then it also handles all attributes through preprocess. Uh, and Another aspect that handling attributes through preprocess allows for is allowing modules to pass down classes and uh, attributes all the way down to the theme layer, uh, which is something that really is quite powerful in the end, especially when combined with RDFA. Uh, RDFA are really just very specialized attributes, and so uh, in this case, a RDFA module could then implement preprocess node and alter the attributes that are uh, needed, and that's handled all that's passed all the way down to the theme layer, uh, and that's true with something like organic groups. If organic groups wanted to add a class uh, to group nodes to specify that it was a group node, right now there's no way uh, for it to do that. It could, it could if it wanted to override the theme registry, provide its own node TPL, uh, and add the class there. But as a theme stepped in, it, that would now get overridden, um, and so there's. There's really no current way to do that. Uh, and handling attributes through preprocess allows for us to do that. And we actually do utilize that a lot at PingVision. Uh, because we know that the, mod the custom modules that we're writing are going to be sitting on top of a studio-based theme. Uh, our module developers have learned that they can take advantage of that and provide the classes that, and output the classes that themers are going to need. Uh, and so it's actually become quite powerful from that aspect. Yes. Um, it, it'll take a little bit longer than a few seconds. Um, if you stay after for one minute or two, uh, we're running at the last few minutes. Um, but most definitely, uh, I can show a quick example. Okay. Yes. So this is the first time I've ever heard of Studio. Okay. Drupal.org slash project slash studio. Um, it's just a base theme. It's on the same level in that sense as Zen, um, in that you're gonna, you would create themes based on uh, the themes that Studio provides. Studio provides um, really two themes. There's a third one in there that is kind of obsolete. But there's Canvas, which is the root um, theme. And then there's Paint, which is essentially the Zen star starter kit. Uh, it just shows an example of how to base a theme off of Canvas and the types of things that you can do. Um, there's several blog posts on the Ping Vision website um, in terms of how it's, why it was created, how it was created, um, and some of the aspects of it. So if you're interested in that, uh, take a look. Is there documentation? Some. Uh, we're working on a lot of documentation, um, but version 2 of Studio takes 
changes quite a bit of things, and so we've held off on really fleshing out the documentation until we've fleshed out what Studio version 2 is going to be. Um, is that coming out for 6? It, it will be 6, yeah. Uh, or I would love to not have to upgrade Studio to Drupal 7. Uh, to take all the functionality that it provides and push it to Drupal 7. Um, a lot of the things designed for Drupal um, in Boston, oh, gosh, that was over a month ago now, um, worked with a lot of people, showed them Studio, and a lot of themers tended to like it. Uh, liked the structure that it provided, liked uh, some of the things that it was doing, and so we're trying to figure out the best way to bring some of those elements into core. Yes? Uh, I like your, your slides. It's very helpful. It's really uh, showing me a lot of power of Drupal. Are your slides available? I will make them available, yes. Um, the slides themselves are available right now um, uh, on the Pink Vision website, but the code is not. Uh, I will write up a very quick blog post um, probably right after this that includes the code um, as well as the slides. Awesome. So they will be available by the end of today on the Pink Vision website. That's great. Where, where are you going to put the, the On the Pink Vision website. That's pingv.com. So thank you very much. Thank you.